Beep. As a mentor to a lot of producers, one of the things I have to teach them is the stereo image. Sound is coming from the center or the side. Does the sound have width? Is it narrow? Just the basic sound in stereo is a saw. This is gonna be a more mono-driven sound, a more narrow sound, a more centered sound. It will look like a straight line on a vector scope. Wide sound is gonna sound like this. Now, as a producer, it's very important that you understand this concept because as you start to get better, you're going to notice that, wow, a mono lead would sound better in this track. A stereo lead can add more width. And the more you dive into it, the more you're going to realize like, wow, leads should probably be more centered while pads and lush super saws can be more wide. Now, if you can't tell the difference, train your ears too, but there's a couple of things to look out for when you're utilizing presets. If there is more than one voice, more than one unison, then most likely the sound is in stereo. If the sound is mono legato and there's only one voice, then it's most likely gonna be in the center. For example, in another synth like Silent, we have one voice, two voices, it's still center. Now, we have this retrack button, if we take that off, so just make sure to understand where the preset lies. It will benefit you greatly as you continue further down your music production career. Remove delays and reverbs. This is a super big one. Okay, now as a sound designer, I have to use what the synth comes with. Now for the newbies, yeah, let, let it be. But once you become better and you want to release music, you want to get the sounds layered, you want to sound fat, you want to move it along, you want to get clean mixes, then these things are going to hinder. <laughs> Now here's the thing, if you still wanna debate whether <laughs> we wanna keep them or not, here's the thing, you can't control signal flow outside of Serum. What that means is that the order plugins are set will dictate how they're processed. So for example, here I have reverb and delay, right? If I decide for some reason, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna, I want a really aggressive mix, so I'm gonna <laughs> distort that, then now we're distorting the reverb and delay inside of Serum. The other thing is, let's assume that I want to layer this sound. So I'm like, I'm going to duplicate it and then I'm going to try and find another sound from... Now I have two different reverb and delays programmed differently that are gonna muddy each other up. Okay, and now if I get rid of the one from the Odyssey one, this one sounds dry as hell while my original <laughs> sounds wet as hell. So it, it confuses the human brain. Now going back to the first thing you should know, now we can see that the bottom new layer we added doesn't really fit because there's a part of the sound that is wide, which is gonna be dictated by your unison again. We remember that unison, so if I lower that, now we have both sounds down the center of the mix. Now from here, we're gonna decrease the decay on this guy a bit here, the release. So now they're like together, together. And this is gonna be the next thing you should know. We can group these guys, okay? And we can distort them, you know? If you learned anything from me before the day I die, do that. You don't even have to do the first step if you don't want to, man. Make the most out of your presets by understanding basic ADSR, basic envelope modulations, basic LFO modulations, and I promise you that you're gonna make the most out of any preset pack that you buy. Now I have very high profile customers, people that have supported my work like Space92, James Hype, David Guetta, Lost Frequencies. Now a lot of them will reach out after to use my sound banks, and the key thing that they always tell me though is that we love your work, you know, it's a good starting point because we can always tweak it, fit our tracks, or to create something cool and new. First thing is I can play it at lower octaves, right? Sounds beautiful. Now, what if you love the sound? You like the tone, but now you're like, well, you know, I would, I would want it to sound like this. Well, if you don't understand the basics of sound design, then you're pretty much stuck with whatever I created for you. However, if you understand envelope one is routed to the amp of Serum, you know, the output of it, and you can shape the sound with it, then, then you, you, know, you can do whatever you want. So for instance, here we can add an attack if I want to make this into a wub. Control the slope of that. You know, I want this to be more snappy. Now here's the mistake most producers make is that they think snappiness, punch comes from processing. And while there's some parts attributed to that, you can never add punch to a badly designed sound. So what I can do to add punch to this is again, lower my decay.
Now the attack goes to the max volume and then from there it starts to come down to the sustain level. If the sustain level is set at zero or negative infinite dB, then the decay controls how long it takes for us to go there. So you can easily see how we go up, 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 and up, attack part, up, decay part. So if I want this snappier, then I would have to lower the slope we just did. And get it around there. We can add legato, mono legato, always on. Now from here, this sound, you might be like, oh, you know, it sounds, it sounds too thin. Basic sound design. You know that, oh, there's a high pass filter, which cuts the lows out as we go from the left to the right. So we can move this down. And now we have that. And now we can add drive. <laughs> now we can distort heavily. Now we have a brand new sound. Oh God, the clouds just covered the suns. So it got dark in here, man. It means it's about to get interesting. Finally, the last thing is LFOs. Let's assume that envelopes are just a little too complicated for you to understand. Understanding that LFOs can be routed to stuff and that you can control from quiet to loud, it's huge. For instance, we lower the level, turn this to the right. All you have to understand is that these things are moving the knobs for you and that helps create that coolness to it. The last few things that I wish producers knew when utilizing my presets, it's just a couple that are more for your benefit to get more bang for buck. Now, one of the things that I've done is that I enjoy buying sound banks from competitors, from other uh, people that make sound banks. For instance, here's some audio tent one that I have. And the reason for that is, is that I can study the way they program. I can also steal their LFO shapes. Now, steal is more like you're saving it because you're buying it. So for instance, this LFO shape looks interesting to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the shape into Serum. And then from there, next time I have a sound, I can utilize it. So maybe I'll put it in analog forms. And there we go. The other thing I can also do is I can also save their wavetables. I can also reverse engineer the presets they've created. For instance, this one, it's like a Reese. What makes it sound that way? So I'll start to remove stuff like, you know, oh, the hyper. And as you start to move the sounds, you're going to learn really cool things like, oh, I can add this to that and do this to get this effect. And that's how I feel sound design is learned in a very fun way. And finally, the last thing I wish you guys knew when you would utilize my sounds is what they're made, the optimal range. And what that means is if you have a bass, this is not how you use it. You want to go down octaves and you want to be there. This is optimal range. Now, how are you going to know optimal ranges? Well, most of the time, if you're in Serum and you're in Ableton, for instance, here, negative three, negative two, zero. If this is set to negative three, the lowest oscillator, then I always say C3 range is optimal. Okay, we get that. For FL Studios, just find where it's at, where it sounds the deepest, where it sounds the fullest, and go from there. Now, this is super important, guys, because I always get questions or comments on my YouTube videos where I do remakes, and a lot of these guys say, oh, I just followed exactly what you did, but it doesn't sound the same. I've had phone calls of angry people telling me, like, the sounds I showed in the video is not the same, and literally, I, it's octave ranges. A lot of times, I tell them, are you playing at the right octave? They're like, what's an octave? So in review, what you should know when you utilize pieces are a couple of things from the patch. Stereo imaging. Is it mono? Is it center? Is it pan left? Is it pan right? What do you need in your song? This will help greatly. Time-based effects like your reverb, your delays, because this is going to mess things up, especially when you start to layer sounds together and when you start to process further. I want you guys to use my sound so you can see how clean they can sound in your tracks, because I do pay a lot of importance to the way these sounds sound. I mix them in a way for you from the synth. You're going to leave the reverb and delays there, and then you're going to have to store it heavily. Of course, it's going to sound bad. Understand the basics of sound design. You don't have to be the best at it but at least understand just a little bit just like how you understand how to eq for mixing and how to compress slightly that's good enough when it comes to sound design because you can make the most out of the patches the presets and i think it's probably fair to say that if you have mixing plugins with great presets out there if you understand the basics of eq you can alter them to fit your liking but maybe you just like one thing that they did differently that you do that you never thought of doing with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you want to support the channel and you've never heard of me make sure to check out my sound design work over at evilsounds.com now if you guys want to up your sound design game i do have again the complete guide to master serum now there's no catch to it i'm not trying to sell you guys anything i'm just trying to promote that i'm a sound designer and if you guys ever need my services you can find my work over at evilsounds.com that's it teach it in a very practical format which i feel is the best way 
And I've gotten a lot of people leaving great comments in that series. So make sure to check it out. Other than that, you guys have a great rest of your day.